Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Colored Valley, no, <laughs> Real Southern Woman. I hope y'all are having a blessed evening. It is Wednesday night, July the 17th. I didn't know it last night, but I did go out with my friend last night, so I didn't see you guys, but we went out to eat because her friend, my friend's name is Ellen, and she just bought a house and sold her house, so she had a celebration last night. And there was 10 of us girls, and we went out to eat. Um, we went out and ate Mexican food. And the funny thing is, um, we were all together last night eating Mexican food. So um, I had a migraine really bad today. And so most of the day, I didn't get a lot done. And so Chris said, we'll go out to dinner before church. And I told my friend Ellen that we were going, and she decided that she would go out with us and that she would go to church with us tonight. So um, we go out where we wanted to go. <laughs> we got there and it was way too crowded. We were gonna go to Texas Roadhouse, but it was so crowded that we wound up eating Mexican again. So last night I had grilled chicken with a green um, salsa ver verde sauce, you know, it was really good. And tonight I had a shrimp burrito and um, it was good. It was mushrooms. So kind of crazy, huh? But I hope y'all had a good day um, and I didn't cook because of my headache. I've actually got collards in the refrigerator made. So tomorrow I plan on making some big butter beans and um, probably make something to go with that. So maybe even some salmon patties. We haven't had those in a while. So um, maybe that's what we'll do tomorrow night. Um, but we've been to church, and last Wednesday when I got home from church, I kind of did his study for y'all, so we're going to do the same thing tonight, and last Wednesday night, we talked about, um, Ephesians chapter 2, and it was verses 1 through 3 last week, and it was all about sin and the lost people, and how we are in a sinful, uh, state, and we're lost, that means we're separated, um, because of our sin, um, we're spiritually dead. And so today, that's about the, that's the first three verses of Ephesians chapter 2, 1 through 3. But to that, tonight, we are actually going to talk about how God works for us when sin works against us. Okay? So, um, I took notes tonight. Last week, I just did it by memory. And then tonight, I actually took uh, my little planner with me and I took notes. I bought this the other day, and I like it a lot, and um, it's my new planner. You can put notes in the back, but in the front, you know, I have my, um, my day consists of, you know, most things CVC, so I have a to-do list, and I have um, what groceries to buy, and what foods to make, and that kind of thing in here. So, um, I was going to look and just see what was supposed to happen today before I got my headache. It says, we were supposed to have Hoppin' John, cream potatoes, collards, and pork chops. And I was supposed to make a peanut butter pie. Well, the only thing in that list that I have done is make collard greens. Because I made those the other day while I was cooking other things. So maybe we will have Hoppin' John tomorrow. It is a recipe um, in one of our cookbooks, and it's also a recipe we made on Family Food Fight that the judges actually really like. They didn't tell y'all. Uh, there's so many things those judges say that y'all never get to hear, uh, but they really like the Hoppin' John. So maybe I'll make it tomorrow, and I definitely want to make the peanut butter pie. So anyway, let's get to our lesson, right? Um, we are in Ephesians chapter 2, and um, like I said, the first three verses were about um, us being dead uh, spiritually and disobedient and with our fleshly nature and before we're saved. And chapter 2, uh, verses 4 through 9, talks about how God is going to work for us, and we don't have to stay there, Okay. So, I'm going to pick up my Bible and flip to Ephesians 2, 4 through 9. And I just, I just found it really quick. What about that? It says, But God, 
who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So tonight we're going to talk about these verses and explain some of it to you so that um, you can get a better understanding of what he's saying to us here. And so, um, and like I said, I'm going by my pastor's outline. Um, we go to Tabernacle Baptist Church, which is in Hiram, Georgia, and the pastor's name is Derek Barry. Um, and he's about 35 years old. He's a very uh, high-spirited young man, got lots of energy, and he talks really fast. So um, he had to tell us tonight that God had real attributes, and he has relative attributes. And he said that the real attributes of God were life, love, and holiness. And then he tells us that the relative attributes of God are his creation, especially associated to man. So he lets us know that he shows us grace and mercy, um, which is a relative attribute. He says that the love is the real attribute, but the relative attribute comes from the real attribute of love is grace and mercy. So because of his love, he has grace and mercy. Um, he tells us that he quickened us. First, it said in, in the verse 4, it did say God loved us. And so he, he told us about the attributes. Then in the verse, I believe it was 5, he said that God quickened us. He made us alive. He said he accomplished this by the power of the Spirit using his word. And then he told us of several instances in the Bible where Jesus spoke and people were raised. And he gives us uh, the widow's son in Luke chapter 7 um, and Lazarus in John 11. And he said that Jesus spoke and they just came alive. And so he was trying to let us know that the word is alive and um, that God quickens us with his word. Okay, so um, we may go back and read one of those uh, points, but if you want to just write it down, you could go back and read it tonight or tomorrow. And it's Luke 7 and John 11. Um, and he said also in Luke chapter 8, he also raises someone else. I didn't, I didn't write that one down. Um, but if you want to read about that too, you can. Um, he also says that in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, the word of God is quick and powerful. And he tells us the word quick there means living. So he just wants us to know that this word of God, which is Jesus Christ, and the word is all about Jesus Christ, is alive, okay? And it quickens us. And um, let's see, he's got John 5, verse 24. And I'm going to look that one up. John 5, verse 24. Let's look it up. Y'all, turn over there with me. John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John in the New Testament. And it's um, 5, verse 24. 
And this one says, and we're still talking about how the word quickens us. And most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come unto judgment, but has passed from death to life. So that's a very encouraging verse, isn't it? So he tells us that we have passed from death to life if we hear his word and we believe it. Okay? Now he also, let's see what he's got. Now the third point, so we've got point A, God loves us. Out of verse 4, we got point B, which is Verse 5, where it says he quickens us through his word. And then you've got point, uh, which is point C. And it says, verse 6, God exalts us. Now, this one's really pretty cool. Well, it's really cool, really. And, um, and this is where he said that he um, raises us to heavenly places. So we are actually, even if we are here in the flesh on this earth, we are already with him in heavenly places spiritually. That is a huge thing, y'all. It's like a miracle, really. And it's true. If you're saved, then your spirit is already in heavenly places. Okay? Um, let's see. Then he tells us to look at John 12, verses 1 and 2. So let's look at that. Okay, I was just reading it to see what it said. Because I can't remember exactly which ones I wrote down. It says, then, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There he made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. What he was telling us here is he not only raised Lazarus from the dead, but he wouldn't finish with him. He actually had him at his own table. And that's kind of like what he's done for us. We're saved spiritually, and we're already with him in heavenly places, just like Lazarus was here at the table with Jesus. And um, so I just thought that was a really, you know, encouraging thing. Um, another thing he also said later is he said, and this is, um, I thought I wrote this down. Let me look. I must not have. Anyway, when he said, uh, he also said that when he raised Lazarus, one of the things he told him was arise and, uh, and go. So he didn't just raise Lazarus from the dead for him to not do anything. He rose in from the dead and told him to arise and go. And he does the same thing with us um, when he saves us. Even if we are spiritually um, in heavenly places, he doesn't just do it so that we can just say, oh, you know, I've been saved from hell, and that's all there is to it. He also plans to do a work in us and through us. So God shows up, and he um, loves us, and he works for us. And he's provided this way for us to be saved. Not only that, but then he wants to work in us. And so then he tried to explain to us what that meant. And he said, you know, like, if you've got somebody that's working for you, maybe they cut your grass. Then you're, you know, it's a good thing. They've done some work for you, and they feel good about they've got to do their work, and you are better off because your work is done. And then he said that Jesus does say, and, and y'all know this, that when he's getting ready um, to pass on the cross, 
Before he gets there, he prays and he tells his father that his work is done and finished. So he, um, so it's quite obvious that Jesus came here to do some work for his father. And um, that, that is something that we should um, also want to do. It says that the point in verses 7 and 9 is that he keeps us. And the reason for that is he has a purpose for us, and that is for the church to glorify him through his grace. Uh, well, for his grace, you know, that we would glorify him is our purpose. If we didn't have a purpose and he didn't have any intention for us to be here, then we would be with him in heaven. And a lot of us know people who are already gone, um, and we wonder, you know, maybe why they got you know, why did God choose them when he did? And that's and that's God's choice. But he does use us. And if he feels like it, that our work is done, sometimes he takes us home. So if you're still here with us tonight and you're still listening to this message, then God still has work for you to do. Um, let's see. He says that workmanship in this verse 10 means something is made or manufactured. So, if you look at the verse that we looked at tonight, which is in Ephesians, I gotta flip, I gotta flip back over there. It says, for we are his workmanship. And this is talking about God's. So that means that we are something made and manufactured. So God says that we are something made, okay, created in Christ Jesus for good works. So that shows us there that God intends to do a work in us. He intends to work on us and help us be something. He really wants us to be Christ-like and in the image of Christ. So if if that's something that you've thought about maybe wasn't for sure real or not, then you can look at this verse right here, and it says plainly that we are his workmanship. We are his. We, we are his, which is something he has made and manufactured. It says that that's through Jesus Christ for good works, okay? which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, do we get saved by works? Absolutely not. We cannot work our way into salvation. It is a gift of God. At least any man should boast. It is not something we have to work for, and it is not something that we're going to lose because we have done something bad. We don't get it for being good, and we don't lose it for being bad because if we did, we'd be in trouble from the get-go, okay? So remember that we are, that it's a gift, a gift from God. Something that he has provided for us as a way so that we could be with him and be close to him again, okay? And he talked about how when Jesus was hanged on that cross, um, there was a veil and the veil was torn and it wasn't just a coincidence. And what this is, is in the holiest of holies, back back then, before Jesus died, um, people did have to go to someone and confess their sin, give them a sacrifice. Then, the, the, then this person would go beyond the whole, beyond the veil, and they had to be the special person that could get behind the veil and be where God was, and they had to be holy. And they then would take your prayers and sins before God, and you would be forgiven through them praying to God. Now, when Jesus Christ passed away on that cross or died, that veil that covered this Holy of Holies was torn, and it wasn't just a curtain like this curtain here. It was huge. It was heavy. It was thick, and it was torn, 
and it provided a way into the Holy of Holies, which means that the Lord, because of the uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, we are able to pray directly to God through him. We no longer have to sacrifice because he did the work. The work is finished. It's done. We don't have to do anything for it, but accept it as a gift. But God does want to work in us and through us, okay? So that was uh, kind of what we talked about tonight. Um, it says that salvation is our beginning and not our end. That when we're sa saved, that we should not just think, oh, we're saved and we're going to get to heaven and that's all there is to it. Because we should know, those of you who are listening, that God wants to do a work in us, okay, and through us. And in order to do that, we have to be able to first read his word so that he can talk to us, okay? And um, it says that Christ is equipping us for our walk and our work. And um, he actually does this through work of God, the word of God, I'm sorry, prayer and suffering. He said he didn't just leave us in the graveyard when he saved us, y'all. He just didn't, since we were dead spiritually, you know, he saved us, but now he's going to do a work in us. And he said there was three ways he does that. And these are scripture passages. If you want to write them down, you can read about them. He's going to do it through the Word of God, and you can see this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. You can rewind that if you need to write it back down. Then he's going to um, use prayer, which is in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. He's going to do it through our suffering, which is 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Now, let me tell you why. These three things happen. And you know, as when I say this, it's you're going to relate to it. And that is because we're in our flesh, because we're not perfect, because we're not always spiritually where we should be. Or even if we think we are, you know, there's just times that we don't get in the Word of God. And we're not feeding us. We're not letting God talk to us. So it's hard for him to get into us in order to work through us. So what he does, we do that, excuse me. So what he does, and it doesn't always happen, but it does happen a lot, is we suffer. And because we suffer, we pick up the word of God. We start searching for an answer. We start searching for a way to make us feel better or help us to figure out what we're going to do or can he, you know, can we get some kind of something from God? And that's how he knows that we're going to pick up that word and then he's going to be in us and then we're going to pray and then he can work through us, okay? So it's kind of like a cycle. So if if you're in the word of God, I mean, it would be great if we could be in there every day, but a lot of us fail to be in that word every day, and eventually we are going to suffer for it. So now, if we were in the word every single day, does that mean we'll never suffer? I doubt that, but I can guarantee you one thing. God wouldn't have to get our attention. Um, our God will get our attention if he needs to, so it's much better um, that if he catches you, uh, that you're not off guard. You know, like I give an example, and that is when I got cancer back in 2010, um, I had been laid off of work in 2009 due to the recession. I had come home. I had cleaned the whole house. I was very much in the Word of God. I was reading. I was close to the Lord. It was probably one of the strongest times that I have ever been close to the Lord. I mean, it was crazy. And that's when I found out I had cancer. Sorry, I, I hit the phone. Anyway, 
So it was actually when I was at my closest to God, when I was diagnosed with cancer. Now, that was a blessing, y'all, because it was so much easier for me to have faith that everything was in his control and have the trust that I needed at the time so that I wouldn't suffer too much, especially around my little children. They were just in the, I believe they were in the third and fourth grade um, about that time, and they were little children, and they didn't need to see their mother, you know, hurting and crying and thinking that everything was terrible, and I didn't, y'all. I really didn't, and so God, um, he, he did get my attention, of course. I got cancer, but it was actually at a very, very time in my life that I was so close to him that everything fell right into place. Everything seemed to be a blessing in the storm. Um, and here I am, nine years later, uh, beating all the statistics and all the odds for my type of cancer. And um, I thank him for it. And I thank you for the trials he put me through. Physically, I'm not where I would love to be. And yes, am I jealous when I see somebody running down the road or uh, doing things that I can't do? Sure, I kind of get that way. But then I remember, you know, this is how he wanted me, y'all, because he's in control. And some of y'all may not believe that way. My mom sometimes had a hard time believing that God was in control of everything. But I don't. I'm not like that. I think he is. Um, and I think that there's reasons why we go through we go what we go through. I think there's reasons why some of our, us have physical problems and some of us are disabled and some of us can't do the things that other people can do. But you know what? If we've still got our mind and we've still got our heart and we've still got the Word of God and we're saved, that's the most important thing in the world that... We have a home in heaven. One day we're going to have a celestial body, an angelic, you know, not really angelic because we're not angels, but we're going to be like Christ-like. We're going to be up in heaven um, where it's beautiful and there's no tears and there's no sorrows. And of all the things that we can think of, if we ever get down, we can just remember that our God, the God of this universe, the God that created everything, loved us so much that he provided a way and he ripped that veil so that we could come to him and have a personal relationship with him through the Lord Jesus Christ and his word. So I hope if any of you guys have had a bad day, that this has been a message that would lift you up and that you would get in God's word because when you get in God's word, no matter what people think, and no matter how hard it can be to do it because of our flesh, um, it makes us so much sweeter. It makes our life so much richer. And it makes the joy in our life so much bigger. So just remember that. I hope that y'all enjoyed tonight. Um, and I know we didn't read our little Bible study in here, but you know, this thing is 365 days and I only get to y'all maybe three times a week, four times a week. So it'll just keep revolving. And then if I want to talk to, to y'all about something special or if I want to continue uh, from the lesson that pastor uses, then I will. And I hope you enjoy it. Um, some of you, I told you on, I believe it was, I can't remember even what night it was now. I think it was Monday night when Melissa was here that you guys would like to um, hear my brother preach. Now, my sister did record him, but I will say, when I looked at it, um, she was back in the back of the church, and so some of the heads, like the, the camera focuses on the hair instead of on my brother. Um, so the next time she records, she's going to try to be up front, so it's a little bit better. Um, so if you do take a look at that, you might want to just listen to it. Um, I had Linda, I believe it was, um, kind of think. Anyway, I had, Lord, I can't even think. Forgive me. But um, I just sent somebody a link through Messenger of that. Of that. Some of y'all have gotten to know Eddie through the show. 
and he is such a sweetheart. If you are interested in hearing his um, message, then I can get that to you. Tomorrow night, we will be having a another view party at my brother's house. He went and bought a TV for it because last week he was just projecting the TV up on a sheet and we were getting a little bit nervous because we didn't know if it was going to be dark enough, but it wound up working really good. But anyway, we're going to have a popcorn party and we're going to pop different flavors of popcorn and I think I want to make some popcorn balls. My mom used to make those at Halloween and I just loved them and no, they're not good for the, for the fillings in your teeth, but boy, are they delicious. So um, we're going to have a popped corn party tomorrow night and watch the show. We do good tomorrow night. I probably shouldn't tell you, but we do. So y'all take a look at it. Um, and I think it's because it is a it is a challenge where you have to go by the directions. And I'm going to say that all three of us on my team are very much don't get out of the line, don't break in line. Do what's right, follow the directions kind of people. So um, I'm not surprised that we did pretty good on that one. So y'all have to watch and see what happens. Um, I guess that is it for tonight. And we'll say our prayers. And um, I hope you guys enjoy the show tomorrow night. And I will be with you again Friday evening. Oh, wait, wait, Friday. Yeah, I should be here Friday night. Friday, we're actually going to go down to Augusta to see Amy's College in that we're supposed to like be down there by 1030 and that's a pretty good drive for us, but I should get rest in the car um, unless they wear me slap out walking because I think we are going to have to walk a lot and sometimes that's pretty hard for me to do if it's, uh, you know, if it's a long time walking. So y'all pray that I do good tomorrow, not tomorrow, but Friday. And that we have a good visit down to Augusta University. That's where Amy wants to go to school, which would be next fall. This fall may start at Mercer. So we're happy that she has, uh, she's looking at a state school. It will be a lot less expensive. So we're happy about that too. So anyway, pray for our travels on Friday. And I should see y'all Friday night. And y'all can see me on TV tomorrow night. Let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for your word, um, for it's through your word that we gain faith, um, and we have come to know you through your word. You have provided a way um, that we would hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, that it can be known throughout the world, and we are thankful for that. Um, be with us as we go through each day that we would make time for your word and time in our life so that you can speak to us. Because we have learned tonight, Lord, that if we don't let you speak to us, then it's hard for you to work through us. And you have to be inside of us, not just through your Holy Spirit, but we need to feed ourselves through your word so that you can work through us and help us, Lord, now that we know that, to apply it to our lives. Um, thank you for everyone who takes the time out of their day to listen. And we just appreciate everything you do for us, everything you have done for us, and look forward to the day that we are not just spiritually in heavenly places, but we are physically in a heavenly place with you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I hope y'all have a good night. And now, I, I, I left my jewelry and stuff home from church, and so I get to go put my gown on. Yay! Love ya. Bye, y'all.